Hi! In this video, I'm going to introduce you to nullable types. Nullable types are used when you need a value type variable that can also be null. They can represent the normal range of the underlying value type plus the additional value null. Nullable types are instances of the struct system.nullable t. There are two ways to declare a nullable type. One is by using system.nullable t and then a variable name. Or alternatively, we could say t question mark. This is a shorthand for system.nullable t. Important is that the type t needs to be a value type. For example, int. It could also be a type that we created ourselves. It could be my own struct point. So in this case, I could have a point center that can either be a point of the Cartesian coordinate system, or maybe we haven't established where the center is yet, and in this case it could be null. A bool is another example for a value type. Uh, notice that the possible values for finished are either true or false or null. So it's the normal range of the underlying type, true, false in case of a boolean, or the additional null value. The type nullable provides some useful functionality. There are, for example, two read-only properties, has value and value. The property has values of type boolean. It returns true if the variable contains a value. Otherwise, has value returns false. The value property returns the value of the variable, provided one was assigned. If the variable was null, an exception is thrown. The struct nullable has also a method called getValue or default. This method returns the value or a default value in case the variable was null. Let's look at some examples. Here I have a variable called x and it is of type nullable integer. I assign 17 which is perfectly fine because 17 lies nicely in the integer range. I could also have assigned null because the nullable integer allows me any integer or the additional null value. Now if I tried to access the value of x, which in my case happens to be null, an exception would be thrown. Using exception handling to deal with an x that happened to be null is not my preferred way to go. Alternatively, I could also check whether x has a value before I make the assignment. So in this case, I create a variable and one of type integer. I check whether my x has a value. If that is the case, I'm going to assign the integer value to n1. Otherwise, if x happened to be null, I'm going to assign minus 1 to my variable n1. I could also use the method getValue or default. So here I am calling the method getValue default because x happened to be null, it gives me the default value, which in a case of an integer happens to be zero. Now this is a different semantics of what we were doing before. I made up my mind already that I wanted to assign minus one in case that x was null. Fortunately, I have the possibility to specify my own default value. I can pass minus 1 as an argument to get value or default, and now my method is going to check whether x is null. If that is the case, minus 1 is going to be returned, otherwise the value of x is going to be returned. Now I want to introduce the null coalescing operator. It is a binary operator that returns the left-hand operand if the operand is not null. Otherwise, it returns the right-hand operand. 
Here is an example. I could say A, question mark, question mark, B. This expression will evaluate to A if A is not null. Otherwise, it will evaluate to B. It's important that A is a type that can be null and B is like the default value that is used in case A was null. So if A didn't have a value, then we're using B instead. Again, I'm using the example that we had before. My x is a nullable integer and we assigned it the value null. So if I would just try to assign x directly to my integer y, this would be a syntax error because my variable y has no way to store the value null. However, I could use the null coalescing operator in that context. So before I make the assignment, the null coalescing operator is going to check whether x has a value. If that is a case, if x happens to be an integer, the integer is going to be assigned to y. If x happens to be null, the uh, default value that is specified as the right operand is going to be assigned to my variable y.